Good morning. It's good to see you here this morning. We're going to turn to John chapter 14 in the scriptures today. And uh, it's always nice to have two roads empty up here. It gives me leeway to be able to, you know, let my tongue go a little bit more. And if I'm spitting, it's not going to hit any of you guys. So you're safe this morning, I'm glad to say. Just don't fall asleep or anything like that. It's just good to see you here. Three weeks left. Less than that, actually. Three weeks. Hallelujah. Yes. Was that a student or a faculty member? I'm not sure. But three weeks. Crazy. Seniors, are you ready to graduate? Yeah. Yeah, some are. Some are not sure if they're going to graduate. (laughs) That's the problem. So we've got a few weeks to go. You know, I I don't know about you, but uh, we spoke a little bit about this on first semester, but I want to revisit this topic with us this morning just a little bit. Not not this topic, but but the introduction. Uh, I've been thinking of this word comfort. Comfort. What brings you comfort? What is something in your life that brings you comfort today? Uh, some people talk about comfort foods. Some people talk about a, uh, you know, man, I, we have this one incredible comforter at home that whenever it gets cold, those two nights a year here in Florida, that we pull out the comforter and Christy and I can both fit under that thing and we just snuggle and it is comforting. I like it. You're like, Mr. Dupay, hold off. Okay, all right, that's fine. That's fine. I'll hold off. So we have comforts. Yeah, what, what do you guys do for comfort? When you hear news sometimes, like, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago or even yesterday, I heard some news and I went out and I was like exercising on my bike and, and I'm like, all of a sudden I'm sitting there like, oh man, I'm about to post the best time ever on this six mile trip, you know, and I'm like, this is wild. Well, why was I doing that? It's like doctors tell you in stressful times that you do certain things to ease the stress in your life. What's some of the things you do? You guys have tests. Those are some of the stresses that are coming up. Some of you are talking about right now, am I going to be back here in the fall because of financial issues? Am I going to have a job this summer? You know, we've been praying for these things. We've heard these things in the administration, administrative meetings. But what are some of the things that you do for comfort? Let me just hear this morning. What's some of the things you do? Sleep. Yes. What else? Read. What about listen to music? What else? Play music. Yes. You take an instrument. You know, isn't it interesting where you see some, like I can't play the guitar that well, but if I picked it up, I'd just, you know, just kind of sit there and strum. And you do things just to comfort. You know, have you ever seen somebody that's nervous? Have you ever noticed some uh, students nervous twitch around here? Like whenever they sit down, the whole time, uh, I, I, I don't know how ladies cross their legs and the whole time one leg is just moving. Have you ever noticed that? Is it just a habit or are you nervous or, you know, what do you do for comfort? It's just what I do. You know, some of us, uh, we say, I, I just need quiet. I, I need that comfort in my life. And, and see, there are certain things that, that um, we say that we need comfort for. Now, I don't know what's going on in everybody's life here. I I do know what's going on in my life. And quite honestly, sometimes in my life, things take place that I am not totally understanding why they take place. That ever happened to you? Like, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you're a little bit confused of why this is happening. Uh, It could be a number of things because we know that life goes on outside the walls of Clearwater Christian College. Isn't that true? Life just keeps on happening. Our family, they still go through issues. Our friends still go through issues. Our churches still go through issues. Life just keeps on on going on. The economy, the government, everything keeps going. And even within the walls of Clearwater, the stresses of the life that we live are here and present now. And so every one of us here has different pressure points that are taking place in our life. A few weeks ago, I was reading through the Scriptures, and before I read through the Scripture, uh, the day before, something took place that really kind of didn't make sense in our life. And, and, And I went to the Lord the next morning because I knew that He could solve it, but I just didn't know how He would solve it, and I didn't know if He would solve it immediately or not. 
And when I read the scripture that morning, I had read John chapter 14 the morning before, but I said to the Lord as I opened the scripture, I said, Lord, I need a verse today. Have you ever said that to God? God, I need a verse. I need a message from you. Now, unbeknownst to me, since I had already read John chapter 14 the day before, I just, you know, have you ever gotten up and you said, did I read that yesterday? (laughs) I was sitting there trying to figure out, did I read this yesterday? But the first verse there says this, let not your heart be troubled. And I just sat there for a moment and just said, wow, Lord, is this what you're trying to speak to me? Let not your heart be troubled. In a life of confusion, in a day and age when the pressures of tests, when the pressures of finances, when the pressures of graduating, when the pressures of getting a job, when the pressures of getting ready to go work at camp or be in a ministry this summer or have certain things done or the pressures of a relationship and how uh, parents respond to me or my teachers respond to me or my pastors respond to me or the, the, the authorities that be uh, are in my life, those things, those Pressures come into our lives, and Christ says to his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. And so I started evaluating my life, not the way that I think, which is part of it, but whether or not I truly live theologically to the way Christ is teaching in John chapter 14. And that's the question I have for you today. Do we really tap into the things Christ gives us to let not our heart be troubled. You say, well, what do you mean? See, he says it twice in this chapter. We use John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6 in a funeral. When a person comes to know the Lord and they pass away and their body is laying right there, we look at the people that are grieving over the loss of a loved one and we say to them, Christ tells us, let not your heart be troubled. And we'll say, sister so-and-so, or brother so-and-so, or family, we can understand from this verse. He says, if you believe in God, you believe in also in me. And he says this, he says, in my Father's house are many mansions. Have you ever heard that at a funeral before? And then we, we always bring it into a full head when it comes to Christ's teaching. And, and Thomas says to him, but, well, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know. We really don't get it. We don't know what's happening right now. There was confusion in their life. And all through chapter 14, 15, and 16, Christ is trying to talk about confusion in people's lives. All through there. And He basically sits there and He says to Thomas, He says, listen, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Me. So He gives us this incredible thing about the way that disciples get confused in life. And why were the disciples confused here? And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ today, let's hopefully not just know this passage by our heads, but get it into our hearts. Why is He saying this to them? Because all of a sudden, the man whom they have been following, the man who had been providing their food for them, the man who had been doing the teaching, the man who had been doing the miracles, looks at them and says, it's been a good three years, but it's time for me to leave. It's confusion. And all of a sudden, their, their minds start just, their, the motor of their thought process just keeps on going, and it speeds up. And, and when we start getting tense and we're confused in our life, our, the heart rate starts getting a little bit higher. And here are the men saying to Christ, what are we supposed to do? And I'd ask you to look at the, the Scripture here also, where uh, in verse 27, this is what Christ leaves with us. And I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but it's going to help us in understanding this. In verse 27, He says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Not the things that you think the world can bring you the peace from the confusion. And then he says this, Let not your heart be troubled. He says it again. Neither let it be afraid. I find that the one of the biggest things in my life when it comes to the issue of confusion of what's taking place is understanding the God whom I serve. And when you jump over to chapter 16... And you look at what Jesus Christ is trying to teach. 
he peppers two things through his teachings to disciples who are confused and say, I can't live without you, Christ. And the testimony that we heard right up front here this morning said, I just want to be closer to Christ. May I submit to you this morning that Jesus Christ said to his disciples in a time of confusion, I want you to be close to the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And I find myself a lot of times crying out to Christ and saying, Christ, I need you in this time. You are my uh, intercessor. You are my God. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. And I cry out to him. And he sometimes looks at the disciples when they're so confused. And in chapter 16, he says, it is profitable for me to die for you, or you will never enjoy the Helper. Isn't that an amazing statement? From what Dr. Stratton was saying to to this morning, can I just submit to the hearts and the minds of Christians here today that what Christ is saying to us is this, the cross gives us the benefit of the Holy Spirit. And so the cross in our lives is so needful to understand that the Holy Spirit and the activity He has in my life is a necessity right now, but I would never get that blessing of the Helper and Comforter in my time of need unless Jesus dies for me. He says it's, it's what is needful. So as you can see on that morning two weeks ago when I began looking into the Scripture and reading through and saying, look at the teachings of Christ, all of a sudden I'm saying, okay, I've been saved for 20 years, Lord, and, and, and I really haven't gotten this principle down because I, I often run back to you, Christ, but you told us to tap into your Spirit. Now look at the... And I, I took the luxury to go ahead and circle different verses where the Spirit is mentioned. Can we read the Scripture? Because the Scripture does the work. And, and if I don't, if, if, uh, so that I don't neglect, the, uh, the, the one main thing is the help of the Spirit. The second thing that Jesus says that is this, constantly in this passage. He says, okay, you're confused. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will send. So there is a, is a little bit of what Christ says to us, this is what I want you to do so that you can enjoy the Spirit. And I would submit to you, my friend, this morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, we will never enjoy the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, unless we have an unbelievable commitment to obeying His Word. I cannot be spiritual and enjoy the Holy Spirit and not listen to Christ's words. I cannot do it. It doesn't match up. So, starting in chapter 14, and let's look at some of these verses this morning. And maybe you're sitting here and you say, you know what? I am confused about my life. I don't know why this trial has come in. I don't know why I'm going through this physically. I don't know why my parents are struggling. I don't know why Christ says, listen to me and tap in to the Helper. And here it is. He starts in verse 15. He says, If you love me, of chapter 14, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you, how long does that say? Forever. Now here, Christians, this is what I'm going to say to us this morning. I find a lot of times in my trials that when I'm going through trials, I feel like Christ isn't there. Do you ever feel that way? I feel like I'm lost. I feel like I just can't tap into God and I can't get to the throne room. It's almost like Jesus is saying, Ryan, don't come to me. I know you love me, but don't come to me. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit and His name is the Comforter and He's with you forever. Do we see the importance of why David said in Psalm 51, as an anointed king of Israel, he said in his prayer of repentance, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He desired the activity. He desired the presence. And a lot of times I desire the presence of Christ, and that's a great thing, but He gave me something called the Comforter. And I just have to tell you, when I hear news sometimes that upsets the apple cart of my life, I run to Christ, but Christ said, I've got a Comforter for you. 
May I say that it's changed my mind the way that I think about trials because yesterday a trial came into my life and the first question and the first plea I had with God was this, God, let the Spirit work in my life. I need Him. Isn't that true from what Christ is saying? I need Him. And if I, I know it's going to sound almost too feeling-oriented, but at times I say to God, I need to feel you. I know about you, but I need you. Verse 17, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know him, uh, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you or with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. In the state of confusion, the Holy Spirit will. In the state of desperateness, the Holy Spirit will. Verse 25, These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, 14 verse 26, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Somebody was talking about uh, struggling with getting into the Word. How has this changed my theological thinking of the way God has given me the Holy Spirit? When I sit down to read His Word and I take the time to read it in my daily walk with Him, I now say to Him, Holy Spirit, Teach me, because I need to hear from you. This is what Christ has left us. The Holy Spirit to teach us the truth. The Holy Spirit to call to remembrance the things that I need in my life. And it's all based off of what Christ was saying. He's like, listen, if you really love me, you keep my commandments. And by the way, when you know my commandments, I'm going to send a comforter, a helper, that will be with you forever. Well, I'll tell you, in my time of need, and I, I know that sounds selfish, but in my time of need, I'm glad Christ left me with someone. You know who it is? It's God. And His name is the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the helper. Chapter 15, he continues on. Verse 26, he says, But when the Comforter... Let me just start in verse 25. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that it is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. He's saying to us this morning, I'm sending you a comforter, and when he comes, he's going to testify of me, Jesus Christ, so that when you tell people of what God has done in your life, when you tell people how he can save people from an eternity without him, when you talk to people about Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is going to witness to that heart of who Jesus Christ is. That's why salvation is never a part of what man does. Amen? It's never a part of what I do. It's not the way I present the Gospel to somebody. It is God's Word that takes effect in the heart of man. I can't get anybody saved. But let me tell you something. He can save people. And the Holy Spirit testifies of who Jesus Christ is. The Holy Spirit testifies this morning of who Jesus is to me and who Jesus is to you. Chapter 16, he's all talking to the disciples at once, and they're, they're, once again they're confused. But here, here's where we're going to end this morning. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. As he was looking at the disciples there, do you think he was saying to them, you're so confused and your life is such a mess because of situations that you're depressed. And I'm right in front of you. But you just don't sense me. He says, sorrow hath filled your heart. They didn't know what they were going to do. 
you ever get that way in your life? I praise the Lord for cell phones. Cell phones are a sense of security to me. Are they to you? Now, I have a soon-to-be 11-year-old who's been asking for a cell phone for two years. It's not going to happen soon. He can hardly text message. But once in a while, they'll borrow my, my wife's phone, and they'll text message me. You know, And I think it's a new language, but never do they spell a word right. And it's like, hey, Daddy, who is this? Two minutes later, because <laughs> it takes them a long time. Tanner, T-A-N-E-R, not T-A-N-N-E-R. What are you doing? Boy, that's a... <laughs> he wants to say ten words, and it takes him five minutes to text it. Now, this morning, when I was driving in here and, and eating breakfast at the, the thing, I, I got a phone call because the whole family packed up and went down to Disney today, and I was awfully je- jealous of them. I told them to ride Soren for me, which is a really cool ride. And when they got there, there was a sense of security. You know why? They called me. We made it. We made it. All of a sudden, I don't have to wonder anymore because I know that they are in the safety of Walt Disney World. And I exhort one person that's driving the car who is definitely way more intelligent and much more mature than any of the kids, don't spend any money. (laughs) Why? Because once you get into that park, there's so much temptation. But it's only just, you know, 25, 30% more than anywhere else. I want to keep in touch with somebody because I want the assurance that everything's okay. And I, and I don't know why in my life sometimes, but when I get news or when, I, when things are confusing, when things are distracting to me, sometimes I just lose my focus and I want reassurances from people. But Jesus said, your hearts are grieving and I'm giving you reassurance from myself and I am sent from God and therefore I am God. And I leave you a helper. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will, come unto you, uh, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. What are the three things that we see and then we'll close today? He says this, he says, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He says in verse 9, He'll reprove the world of sin because they believe not on me. I don't believe there's a greater day that I can point to in my life than March 5th, 1986, in a Wednesday evening prayer meeting, after being in Christian school for three years after my dad got saved, that I finally heard the message of Christ and came to know Him as my Savior. You remember that day? Remember when you came to know Him? And young people, as you sit here this morning, there is a Holy Spirit. And in a crowd this big, I am convinced, only God knows, that in a crowd this big, there may be a young man or a young woman here today that needs Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And all year you've heard us say the words get saved and your DLs and your RAs and everybody else in your Bible class and people praying for people. And you are sensing the conviction of something. And Jesus said, it's my Spirit. That's who it is. And you know you should come to Christ, but you just put Him off and you stiff arm. But He is here to reprove the world of sin. He convicts. And He still convicts me even after I come to know Him. Does He you? I don't know how many times a day I mess up, but I can tell you this, my God knows. And every time I ask Him to forgive me, my God forgives me. I've sent him to be the reprover of sin. I've also sent him of righteousness because I go to my Father 
and you see me no more. What does this mean? This means that Jesus Christ sends us the Holy Spirit and His indwelling in our lives so that when people see the things that I do, they don't see me, but they see Christ and His righteousness and His perfectness through me. In the Old Testament, we see all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. In the New Testament, Paul says, I die daily so that Christ can be, I crucify my flesh so that Christ can be glorified. He, we testify of, I pick up my cross so that I will glory in the cross of Christ. I am here so people can see Christ. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Then it says of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. You know, the Holy Spirit tells us today that there's a judgment coming. It does not matter how the world views my God. We're going to win. Isn't that a comfort to you? I don't know about you, but in the world we live in, the Holy Spirit testifies to us to say, we're going to win. What is the victory that we have? It's our faith. That Jesus Christ is alive. And He's coming back. Sometimes I doubt it. Sometimes I get into the Word and I say, Can this really be true? Will this really happen? By the strength of the truth of Jesus Christ, I can say yes. By the activity of the Holy Spirit in my life, I can say yes. And we need to tap into the Holy Spirit so that we can say, Christ is working through me. My friends, are you tapping into God's comforter? Are you using the helper that Christ left us? And I have no problem with my personal theological life praying to God Jehovah in the morning, praying through Jesus Christ, and praying to the Holy Spirit to fill me for this day. I have no problem doing that. You know why? Because Christ left Him to be a testament in my life that Christ is in me. So may I say it this way without disrespect to our holy God, use the Spirit. What's your trial? Every one of us has one. What's your trial today? Go to the Comforter. That's why He's here. Let's pray. Father, thank You for this day. Thank You for this opportunity for Your Word. Spirit, we thank You today for moving in our midst. And I know when we read through Scripture sometimes, it doesn't hit the heart until we truly think about it. You alone can take the message of Christ's words and, in, and put it into our hearts. I pray today that You would do that. Thank You, Lord, for what You're doing. Jesus, we thank You today for saving our souls. We did not deserve what You've done for us, but You told us that in, except for the cross, we would not be able to enjoy the Spirit. So, Lord, You even had us in mind through Your death. Thank You for that today. May we do everything to honor and glorify You. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.